It's the women's college basketball's turn here. It's dinner time. Sarah Kustak, Lisa Beinson will with you. The Elephants Health Women's Fort Myers tip-off, a Thanksgiving Day special. Tennessee and Indiana both coming into tonight with three and one records. A top 25 matchup SEC against the Big Ten. Destiny Wells getting her second start of the season. Over to Jewel Spear, the transfer from Wake Forest, who takes the first shot. And the push is on for the Hoosiers. The first bucket, Chloe Moore McNeil. Well, and you're seeing exactly how Indiana and both these teams want to play up tempo. And they're going to look to score, get it in on the inside. It's going to be interesting to see the different defensive looks. Sarah Puckett fade away. Two possessions. Puckett lost her shoe. Your starting lineup sponsored by the Islands Beaches in the neighborhoods of Fort Myers. The same lineup for all five games here for Indiana. Sarah Scalia is the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week. Mackenzie Holmes is the school's first first team All American last year and a potential Player of the Year candidate for Tennessee. They got injury considerations. Rakia Jackson out. Rakia Jackson for Tennessee, missing her third straight game. The leading scorer, leading rebounder, obviously a huge hole. She is missing her third game here for Tennessee with a lower body injury. And Jasmine Powell, we expect to see her for Tennessee, but she's not in the starting lineup here tonight. There's another touch for Puckett. Team that can be susceptible to turnovers and for one that is stressing defense, that can stress you on the other end. Ball protection will be at a premium. Mackenzie Holmes gets double teamed and loses the ball. And, and you said it, Lisa, the, the Mackenzie Holmes, she's a player that is going to command double teams. That's the different looks that Tennessee may throw on her. She was a first team AP All-American last year, the first for the Indiana Hoosier program. She can score and they know they need to get the ball out of her hands. Oh, what a spin move on a time. Destiny Wells, the Belmont transfer. Woo. So that's something for Indiana needing to shore up the gap. There's a deep shot, Sydney Parrish. Here to Ben, she's been dealing with a hamstring injury. Looks pretty good on that shot. The second year with the Hoosiers. And Parrish rips it away. Parrish this time taking it inside. They're going to let him play a little bit. I like this. Physicality, that's the nature of how these two teams can play. Darby checks her feet in and out. Quick looks to the basket. Both these teams are trying. Garzone's first shot. And look at Tennessee. Leaking out, it's Darby for two. It's a nice look and a good move there by Puckett. Everyone collapsing for Indiana around that inside. Yarden Garzon, you know, for her in her sophomore season, the added responsibility coming over from Israel, just getting used to the collegiate game here in the States. That's the comfort level that you want to see. Tennessee always a good rebounding team. Sarah Scalia, her first look from D, off the mark. Terry Morin and the Indiana Hoosiers looking for win number four, the 2023 Big Ten Coach of the Year and the winningest coach in Indiana history. Kelly Harper, of course, year number five. Talk about years flying by as the Tennessee head coach. Back-to-back -back Sweet 16s the last couple of years. This is the Elephants Health Women's Fort Myers tip-off that you're watching from Suncoast Credit Union Arena. And there's the first look. Boy, she didn't waste any. It's been heavy emphasis for Terry Morin on what she wants this group to do defensively. They haven't quite been at their standards at the early part of the season. Garzone behind the back collects herself. A size advantage. She sealed and tried to get deep inside the paint. Caroline Stripling coming off an incredible game for her. 19 points, 14 rebounds. We got a foul call. Now give an opportunity here at the stripe when you already did the hard work to get her out of position. Tamari Key, if you're unfamiliar with her story, a two-time SEC All-Defensive team member, all-time record holder Tennessee for blocks, but dealing last year, didn't play at all with a blood clot in her lung. They're going to have to get some minutes. She's getting set to check back in for the first time. It'll be interesting to see how many minutes she can provide at that spot. Good pass, good finish. Meister with her first two. Bargesser continues to impress with her playmaking. Draws in and engages the two to create that bucket. 
Powell, shifty, crosses over to the left side. You can tell she's playing with some confidence. Ooh. Two of three from the floor. Harris very decisive, but tosses it away. Decisive on the penetration. But the turnover on the pass. Final few seconds here of the quarter. Shot clock not in play. This is interesting, the two Minnesota transfers guarding each other, Sarah Scalia and Jasmine Powell. Three to shoot for Powell. Two to shoot for Powell. Spins against Scalia and misses. She wanted that one. Not a ton of efficiency, but a lot of pace here for both of these teams. Top 25 matchup. They have met three times going into tonight overall. Mentioned that Indiana won last year in Knoxville. Moore McNeil had the first bucket for Indiana to start out the game. Good ball movement. This is Beaumont. Gets turned away. They got to find something for to shoot. Moore McNeil. Spin in and out. Tennessee staying in front. In, in Indiana, in trying to shift and rotate this Tennessee defense is something they're going to need to do more of, whether that's cutting through, whether it's moving side to side. But for the volunteers to be able to, to stay in front and use the shot clock is something they want to do. Open look for Wells. Boy, both of these teams having trouble finding the bucket consistently. Parrish taking it all the way in. We mentioned Key has a few blocks to her name. The most in single season for Tennessee. Uh, and she's showing why she was the defensive player of the year finalist. And the lay-in by Meister, but loses sight of the entirety of the floor there in that situation. She was so keyed in on the three-point shooter in the corner. That's nice running by Indiana. And we talk about running. Hesitation for Wells. Loses it. On the deck. Jump ball. And the way that Indiana likes to play, and, and they might have to use her a few more minutes if she's capable here tonight. Hollingshed checks back in. Hand off to Spear. Spear scoreless until there. 0 for 4 before that shot. Well, and, and she too is a three-point shooter. You see the nice stroke off that play. But with your point about the size, size is one thing, but Indiana has also got a quickness to their game, and they want to play fast, and so... You're looking at a player like Howland Shed, how she's getting up and down the court, her movements in the context of the offense, that's going to be important. Three-pointer, that's a long two. Terry Moore, they got beat badly at Stanford in 96-64 loss, and they said, quite frankly, we were embarrassed, but they felt like they created shots and did a good job generating looks, just couldn't get them to go down. That's some of what you're seeing here early on. One of those players tested in that Stanford game, Mackenzie Holmes, against Cameron Brink. Seven of the first 16. Long, high arcing shot. Spear with five points. Mackenzie Holmes. Indiana does need to make sure that they find her, get her going, look for touches. And... Crossover by Spear. A look for Darby. Barchester on the push to Scalia. Wide open. Usually doesn't miss those. Those 24 points, the most that she has scored in her Indiana career. Holmes clears. Or McNeil working off a screen from Holmes. She says, come get the rescreen. Inside four minutes here before halftime. To Holmes. Quick move. And lays it up with her left. Work fundamentally. Just continue to improve year after year. Good cross-court pass. It opens up Destiny Wells. Off the back iron. Holmes with another rebound. Holmes has got three rebounds here tonight. Indiana on an eight-nothing run in the last two minutes and counting. Oh 
Tennessee once again playing without Rakia Jackson. Has seen her third straight game. Ring it up. Garzone's looking like the Garzone from her freshman season. She's hot. But out again with a lower body injury. And obviously trailing 27 to 16 is highly missed here so far again tonight. Powell cleans it up. And another deep shot, her second of the game. And that's what you want to see from Jasmine Powell. Because to add on, when we were talking to Kelly Harper about Rakia's absence, and you said it. Kerso oh, leads all scores and double digits once again. She's almost at her season high already. 13 points, 15 is her season high. Offensive rebound, another look. Deep shot from Darby looking for the answer. It'll be Hoosier basketball. Yarden Garzon is just locked in here tonight. Take a look right here. Nice pass from Moore McNeil. That is a deep shot in look. But for Garzon, you said her ability, she's got a, a savviness in how she can get to the basket, the moves and handles that she has, her footwork in getting to spots on the floor. So to be able to open up an offense and how that changes the dynamic of how Indiana can play is huge. Push it to it again. Garzon. <laughs> Well, she is back. The cheers are not just coming from in this building. It is 1 a.m. over in Israel where she's from. And mom and dad, she told us, are watching here tonight. Good pass for the finish for Striplin. Let her right to the bucket. That double team's always coming. It's a triple team for Holmes. The Tennessee dropping back into a zone look, and Indiana trying to do a good job of breaking down this defense. But know who has been breaking down the defense? Tonight's instant replay, sponsored by the islands, beaches, and neighborhoods of Fort Myers. It's the 20-year-old. It's the birthday girl. Yarden Garzone. And take a look at the variety. She's just busting it out. A little smile on her face there. But she's also, you could tell, a really unselfish player because she continues to look for her teammates. Moore McMeal takes the final shot of the first half. Indiana red hot. They were seven of their last eight going into the break, and they've got a 12-point edge. She got back to the way we're typically accustomed to seeing her knockdown shots and doing it in a variety of ways, as you can see from there. Getting it out from deep, working the mid-range game. The thing that's so impressive about Garzone at 6-3, she can put it on the deck and is methodical and deliberate in how she can dissect the defense. And you look right there, movement off the basketball. Her teammates have done an excellent job in finding her. And yeah, a little bit of a smile there as she sees the numbers continue to pile up. For Garzone, it'll be interesting to see what Tennessee does on the defensive side of things, given the way that Yarden has played here in this first half. You talk about Indiana. I mean, defense had been a concern for Terry Morin, and, and that's what she, you know, likes her bread, her uh, butter her bread with, is what I'm trying to say. Show moments of improvement in the last game, but holding Tennessee here to 21 points in the first half. Tennessee forces the turnover on care zone. Puckett taking a peek inside. And she steps it back, gets the friendly roll, and Puckett now with her first points. Tough take. Speaking of shooters and efficiency, that's exactly what Sarah Puckett is. 6'2 junior. She understands ways in which she can get off a shot, and you like the aggressiveness out of the gates here for her. Puckett had actually rolled her ankle in shoot-around, and I, and I bring that up because she's so tough. Immediately got it taped up. Both her ankles are taped up and finished shoot-around, and it started this game. Sydney Parrish had to sit a little bit in the first half with a couple of fouls, but she knocks down that distant shot. But already you're seeing the ball movement by Indiana and how they're working those double teams that Tennessee is showing. Puckett this time <laughs> down on the post. What a move. Men's side of things played throughout the course of this week on Monday and Wednesday. Our great uh, producer, Carol Langley, doing all those games as well. 
good name drop. Much lower than what they're accustomed to in the first four. Well, in, in there's two sides to that as well. Turnover. That's a tough formula when you're you're shooting quick, you're missing, and Indiana's starting to heat up a little bit here. Post touch for Holmes. A single coverage this time. She had seen multiple defenders in and double, and because of that, Holmes has some room to operate. Seven points now. And it's the largest lead of the game. Hoosiers looking to add to it. To see if Holmes touches now go up here. With Tennessee possibly defending differently, to your point, with the three-point shot. Sarah Scalia looking for more threes. Wells taking it out. Stripling for three. Prior to that make. And she's someone that Tennessee needs to get going here, especially from the three-point line. She's a efficient shooter from there. Claire Zone takes it all the way in. We continue to talk about it, to have the range and also the ability to put it on the deck is something that is incredibly tough to defend. That type of sustained energy, both on the glass, the pressure defensively, all of those things. Even when shots aren't going in, you do not want that to trickle into the other areas of the game and allow fatigue. Claire Zone, two-player game now with Holmes, who flips it up with the left hand. Largest lead of the game, plus 20 now for Indiana. Striplin hit her last one, now she's gone back to back. Well, Striplin knocks that down, but give credit to Destiny Wells. One finding the hot hand, two. She's the one who penetrated pulling in the defense to give room for Striplin. Holmes from 15 feet out. Striplin hit two three-pointers coming into today for the season. And she's got two of three already here in this game. She shot the ball, though, well from three last year. 12 of 31. Not taking a high volume of threes, but efficient when she does get them. Double team coming. So Puckett gets rid of it. Corner look, not there. Stripling battling for it up and on. Quick eight points in the last three. Oh, what a pass. Powell looking inside. They've averaged close to 20 turnovers per game. They're almost 18 turnovers per game. And that's an area where, you know, just the continued possessions that Indiana has gotten has helped them to build this lead. And a lot of these entry passes, some of the other passes we're seeing when they penetrate, get inside the lane, some that have been picked off around the basket, those are the things to clean up. Stripling coming off that 19 and 14 game against Troy. Big second half here so far. She's in double figures, 11 points, three rebounds. You continue to let them play. About a minute to play here in the quarter, seven to shoot. Moore McNeil, 15 out. It, and she called for that for home. She gave her a little nod, come up, set me a screen. <laughs> Comes off of it nicely. Chloe Moore McNeil had a breakout year last year in her junior year. Stripling again. Moore McNeil has been effective the last few possessions for Indiana. Shot clock still in play. One to shoot. Kiazzo back higher. A look right there the penetration and the engagement of a second defender that allows for a lot of openings they're doing a good job cutting and balancing the floor also because they've been shooting the three balls so well it's opened up the floor you can see it right here the ability to have second side actions and movements off the ball has benefited them greatly and you're looking at one that has been the most dominant with that yard in their zone how she's been able to not only find her own shots, but facilitate for teammates. It's been a, a really nice thing to see out of this Indiana offense with their rhythm and flow. Tennessee opens up the fourth quarter. See if they can generate some offense here. Puckett from behind the three-point line. Tennessee still struggling. Boy, Jasmine Powell pursuing the offensive boards here tonight. Darby gets another look. Tennessee is four of 15 to a three-point territory. And they're a team that the early part of the season, they've shot in 
they've shot nearly 35% from a three-point line. And some of these looks have just been nice, clean looks. They're just not getting to go through. Holmes got double teams and she spinned away from both players for two. Woo. Quick spin move, also excellent feed by Scalia. The laser to get it into Holmes, who had done a good job of working that inside position. 11 points for Holmes here tonight. Indiana defense has been challenged by their head coach. Gave up 96 to Stanford, 79 points to Murray State last Friday in a win. There's a two, it's a long two for Powell. Powell's been impressive. The second half, I should say, in and around. Demanding the basketball, there's been some really nice entry passes by her teammates. Boy, she's good off that one foot. Sarah Puckett, off balance. Practices those shots. She's got a savviness to her game. Garrison's gone cold in the second half. Puckett fouled on the three-point shot. How you go about it, because there's still a lot of time left in this one. Twice with Sarah Puckett when she's gotten a touch on the post. Rolled her ankle just a little bit at shoot-around, but got right back in there. Hard to keep her out of the game. And Puckett now with eight points. Here's home. Right into the double team. Holland check. And look at Sarah Scalia. Taking it coast to coast. She should not be able to beat you up the floor off of a made basket. Spear pulls up, air ball. Morning. And Indiana, let's not forget. Won the first outright Big Ten title in 40 years last season. They were a number one seed. Four of five starters back for this year. And in their terms have been relatively slower out of the gates. Oh, Mackenzie Holmes. And for game, she didn't pass that mark in that one. She's got 10 of her 15 points here in the second half. They're looking for Sarah Puck. Injuries playing such a big part of their story. No Avery Strickland. She's been scratched here tonight. We've talked about Jackson missing her third straight game. And a new career high. Tamari Key is back in. Only played for two minutes in the first half for Tennessee. Trying to get that post up, and she's whistled for the offensive foul. Whether it's refining your game, whether it's conditioning for, for everyone, for both of these coaches, continuing to implement what they want with players. It is so early in the season. You cannot repl replicate game action. And, and so regardless of score, all of those thi these things are a learning process. Five here to shoot. Scalia from the elbow. Powell sizes it up from the corner. Inside three minutes left to play. More McNeil off the mark. Holmes puts it back and draws the foul. But her maturity level, she's she's learning to find her voice. She's that popular. That, but where you want to then be in January, come March, what that looks like in the bad taste they have in their mouth from the way things finished in the tournament last year. Win a tough two. Sarah Scalia from up top. No question, still a talented Tennessee team, but just way different without their leading scorer and rebounder. 13 coming in the, the second half for Puckett. A minute and some change left to play. And some subs getting some time. Lamandola and Phoebe Meister. Rocky Top at halftime. Now we're hearing from these Hoosier fans. Let's go Hoosiers. These fans, give them credit. Tell you what. Great amount of just tenacity and grittiness with how both these teams have played. Second year of of this event for the women. The sixth year for the men. Mentioned eight women's teams in two different divisions. And love to feature this top 25 matchup for you on Thanksgiving Day. Key pursuing it, and the putback is good.
Tamari Key, we're all rooting for you. Final bucket, final play of the game. 71 to 57, the final. Maybe the defense and the offense that Terry Morin was hoping for, though, against a shorthanded Tennessee team here tonight.